Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more Plague Inc. Evolved Custom Scenarios. I have not had a chance to sign into Discord for a little while now, so I'm sorry if I'm missing out on some requests, but the good news is I found things that I think are going to be interesting anyway, including one called the Day of the Trifids, I think it's how it's pronounced. There it is! Wow, five stars! Carnivorous plants which can move by themselves and sting with an infectious venom. This is, um, this is a book, I think. Uh, unless I'm much mistaken, it, it's a book that was written in, like, 1950 or something like that. I think there was a sequel written like, by a different author, like, a while ago. There might even be a movie. I don't know. I can't say I remember much of anything about it. Except that it's basically a giant, uh, a plant that actually can kind of walk around on three root-like legs. And it kind of kills people. So, okay. We've got our parasite. It's Trifonatine 51. Okay, Trifonatine 51 it is. Beware of the Trifids. I look at this and I want to say Trifids, but it's supposed to be Trifids, I think. Large carnivorous plants which have a powerful venomous sting and are capable of ambulatory movement. I.e. they walk around kind of like men do. Artificially created in 1951 by a Cold War biological weapons unit, their seeds were scattered over Central Europe when a plane carrying them to the U.S. for study was destroyed. They begin in the Ukraine. Oh, that's an interesting starting location. You don't see that happen very often. All right, what do we got for our transmissions? We start off with Trifid Sting 1. Infectious poison is transmitted by the sting of a Trifid. Then we have Trifid Sting 2. Trifid is able to lash venom beyond the reach of its sting. Lash venom? Increases infectivity and severity. I think the reason they're choosing the word lash there is because it's actually, uh, if I recall correctly, is an actual description of the Trifid. So it hobbles around on three legs, which is a little bit awkward because it's like a person who walks with two legs but has a crutch, right? So he kind of walks like with a limp. But that limp is when like the giant stinger kind of like lashes out. Uh, if I remember something like that. So that's why it says lash. Yeah, just little tidbits you get from that. Blindness. The venom degrades the optic nerve, causes pain and blindness. Also, hypersensitivity increases likelihood of an allergic reaction to the venom, which can distract the immune system. Rich regions are particularly vulnerable. Dermatitis. Irritates the skin and causes blistering and itchiness, increasing infectivity. Actually, a pretty good amount right there. We'll pick that up. Muscle twitches. Venom disrupts motor neuron activity, causing twitching and aching muscles. Nausea. An irritated stomach lighting leads to discomfort. Dopamine activation. Venom activates dopamine receptors, causing mild euphoria. And apparently, that euphoria is unnoticeable because it reduces severity quite a bit. For abilities, we have our cold heat and drug resistance as normal, although I will point out that these each have their own custom descriptions, which is pretty impressive. Increased locomotion. Trifid plant can lift itself further off the ground, increasing its locomotive speed and allowing it to cover more dense or uneven terrain. Which gives you a bit of severity, also lethality, because it's better at killing people. Sting elasticity. Trifid sting becomes more elastic, allowing for greater flexibility and accuracy. Again, somewhat lethal. Okay, I mean, I'm on board with this so far. This is kind of a cool idea for a scenario. You know, it's a very obscure book, but, I mean, hey, that's awesome. I like to see obscure things become scenarios. It means that the author is very cultured. That's what it means. At least that's what my parents would tell me. Trifid Sting 3, able to penetrate protective eyewear and clothing, increasing infectivity and severity. Air 1, vaporize under certain conditions without losing potency. Increases infectivity, especially in the arid environments and a plane transmission. Water, remains potent in fresh, warm water. Increasing infectivity, especially in human environments and a ship transmission. Botanic shift, uh, or is it botanic? Because it's like botany, but I, I always read that as botanic. I, I don't know. Mutation causes other plants to become susceptible to trifid venom, absorbing and passing it on through their leaves, fruit, and seeds. Increases research speed. That doesn't sound like a very good prize at all. But it's interesting because it means that the venom basically turns all plants into, like, poison ivy. Kind of cool. All right, let's go ahead and pick that up. That's a pretty hefty amount of infectivity, and considering we haven't gotten into any arid or, uh, well, I guess we do technically have a humid region. Okay, water transmission's not such a bad idea right now. We'll go ahead and pick that up as well. What is it with starting Plague Inc.? By the time that I get to Plague Inc. recording, my voice always feels sort of shot. What is it with that? I don't know. Dopamine activation, we're going to reduce our severity a tiny bit, then go for the cysts because that's pretty good. Also, the hypersensitivity because I like the idea of being more effective in these wealthy countries because relatively soon we should start making our way west. Instead, we went to Poland, the Baltic states, and Russia, all non-rich. We could have gone to Central Europe, 
but that was too much to hope for. Abscesses. Lumps develop into large pockets of painful, venomous flesh, which burst easily and increase infectiousness. Necrosis. Um, let's see, blah, 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 that looks normal, okay. Uh, anaphylaxis, like anaphylactic shock, I guess. Severe allergic reaction causes swelling and low blood pressure, can be fatal. Immune suppression. Venom destroys lymphocytes, suppressing immune system and allowing greater freedom of mutation. We also could just, you know, increase our severity this time with limbic degradation. Overproduction of dopamine causes damage to the limbic system, resulting in emotional, behavioral, and cognitive difficulties. Harder to cure. I like the idea of the emotional difficulties. That just seems like we're kicking people while they're down. Not only are you going to be horribly, horribly sick from poison, you're also going to be a little bit hysterical. Have fun. All right, increasing in uh, research speed doesn't sound that good, but let's see what we get for it. Pulses 1. Leguminous plants like beans, peas, and lentils become susceptible to the trifid venom. Increases infectivity and mutation chance, especially in the rural regions. Tubers, potatoes, carrots, beets. Is, is a carrot and a beet a, a tuber? I know potatoes are, but I thought carrots and beets were more like root vegetables. I wasn't aware they classified under tubers. I could be wrong on that. I guess I wouldn't know. Increases infectivity with land transmission and mutation. Then we have grain, rice, wheat, barley. Uh, rich and poor countries. Some pretty good options there. Probably well worth the increased research speed. Um, we're going to go ahead and pick up the pulses because we are actually surrounded by a fair bit of rural land right now. So this actually will help us to get around a little bit faster. Not a terrible deal for me. Uh, for symptoms, I could go for the muscle twitches or nausea. Let's go for nausea. That leads to vomiting, which is a pretty standard um, uh, follow-up to the nausea. We'll go ahead and pick that up, though. That leads to gastroenteritis. Venom irritates the stomach and small intestine, causing sever. A first typo of the scenario. There's always one. Abdominal pain and potentially lethal dehydration. All right, the limbic degradation. Um, is Ukraine considered cold? It is, so we actually also will need some heat transmission. We'll go ahead and pick some of that up. Since we are now starting to spread a little bit further south, the next level, of course, would be 19 points. Also could consider going for some of this drug uh, resistance, which we will do. And if we can get one or two more points, we will go for the heat resistance. Perfect. Okay. Now we need to get even more air and water transmission, if we're smart. Uh, grain is also not a terrible idea, and it actually kind of makes sense, because whether you're rich or poor, grains are freaking everywhere, man. It's a, uh, it's a necessary staple to the human diet. Tubers, land transmission's good and all, but I'm actually far more concerned about my ability to get to Madagascar. We're gonna go for the water transmission, probably then the air transmission, just to kind of give us a bit more, uh, infectivity in the arid regions. I think that makes a bit of sense. Pick that up. That leads to extreme bioaerosol. The venom bypasses all physical and chemical air water filters. Uh-huh. Sounds really good. Uh, for 26 DNA, is it worth? Maybe. Uh, yeah, we'll go with a yes. We'll go with yes, it probably is. And now the question is, do we want to start up necrosis? Probably not until we've gotten around a little bit more, especially to some of the islands, since they are the ones I am the most concerned about. Muscle twitch is just uh, mutated for free. We have muscle atrophy next. Uh, let's see, it degrades the motor neurons, leading to a breakdown of muscle tissue and therefore is harder to cure. All that sounds pretty good. Let's go for even more drug resistance. That should make things a little bit easier, right? Got into Greenland pretty early. Turns out you start in, um, start in, uh, the Ukraine. Not so hard. Let's see, what else are we missing? Actually, New Zealand is the island that we are missing right now, and there's a pretty good chance we can get there as long as we can get a plane or a boat. There it is! Boom! Okay, you know what? I say yes. We go for the necrosis now. That leads to a coma. Neuropathic effects in the brainstem cause loss of consciousness and sometimes death significantly harder to cure. Always pretty good, and we've gotten into every country. What do you know? That worked out pretty darn good, actually. The necrosis, of course, will make it easier to continue infecting, even though uh, we are killing. Epilepsy has begun. Okay. Now we can go for the coma. Alternatively, I could go for schizophrenia. Significantly harder to cure from that as well. Um, lethality would be good. Mm, anaphylaxis is pretty good, but I think we're going to go for the coma. That leads to a total organ failure. Kind of figured it was going to go in that direction. Catastrophic cell death. 38 DNA. That's a lot of DNA, man. That is a lot of DNA. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that. We've managed to infect the entire world. People are still dying. There are no healthy people left in the world. Can we kill faster than they can cure me? The answer is almost certainly yes. 
Um, we are getting a pretty reasonable amount of DNA as time goes on. There's abscesses. Mm, abscesses was not an especially useful pickup. So basically, the mutation chance hates me and is not going to work for my favor. That's fine, though. I don't need you anyway. We'll be okay. I just want to get that total organ failure because at this point, we're a little low on the lethality. We'll figure it out, though. As we continue killing people, no, the price does not go down, of course. Oh, shame, shame, shame. Um, 55% cure progress right now. It's still working on that cure. It's getting a little bit close, actually. 39, there we go, total organ failure. Pericardial effusion. Venom accumulates in the pericardial uh, cavity, causing an increase in cardiovascular pressure, which can lead to a fatal heart attack. Also pretty lethal. And, of course, there is the systemic infection. Um, I'm still a little concerned that we may not cure fast, or we may not be able to beat the cure. We are definitely ramping up the lethality. Is it going to be enough to slow them down? Yes, because about half of the cure progress or our cure, poten cure potential has been destroyed, which means this is now going to be pretty easy. All right, not bad. Toxic reshuffle for 36 DNA would allow us to reshuffle a fair bit, which I guess I'll go ahead and do. It also gives lethality, interestingly enough. Radically mutates its toxicity. Increasing the work required to find a cure and slightly increasing lethality. And then we can get to genetic hardening 3 before we go for 1 or 2. That always bugs me slightly when authors miss that. Uh, it's, it's a basic gating mechanism. I understand that it's an easy thing to miss, but... You know, just because it's it's adjacent, you know, you gotta be careful that you don't accidentally break the path. You know what I mean? Oh, the mutation patterns were extraordinary and got me 3% extra cure reduction. That's nice. Now we just wait for the last 5 million stragglers to keel over dead. And the trifids are roaming the earth freely. What shall they eat now? Probably our many, many cows. I don't know. You ever wonder if sometimes maybe the uh, the giant farms that we've created are actually going to be more useful in feeding future species than us? That may be a random thought that I sometimes have. I don't know. 601 days is a little bit on the long side, but starting in Ukraine is a little bizarre. I could have gone through the necrosis a bit earlier. Uh, I really didn't expect to get into Madagascar as easily as we did, though maybe I should have, because once you get into Saudi Arabia with really good infectivity, it's pretty easy. Yeah, I guess maybe the Caribbean should have been more of a concern, but we managed to get there pretty early, too. Lucky me. 58% cure progress, 38,000 points, 2 stars. Pretty decent scenario. Uh, really good descriptions across the board. Sticks to a theme. Really very few mistakes. All in all, it's just good. It's a good classic plaguing scenario. One that you really can't complain about. So, wonderful. I'm glad I found that. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If so, then be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.